I'm Karen Snyder. I'm the CEO of Textio. I'm going to take you on a journey about text today. You can see up there is our Textio home screen, and I'll walk you through it. How many of you, no matter what business you're in, whether you work at a university, you work in technology, you work in government, you work in finance, I bet the thing you produce most of every single day in your organization is text, right? Whether you make hamburgers or widgets or computers, text is actually the main thing you produce. So our premise at Textio is that what if for every business document you write, you could know how it would perform before you ever published it? What if every time you're writing a business document, you're getting feedback specific to your document type to make it great, right? Imagine spell check, but exploded by machine intelligence so that when you're writing an email, you get the perfect feedback make that email to your boss land successfully. When you're writing uh, your marketing website, you're getting the perfect feedback on that copy so that customers are going to engage. When you're writing a job listing, and I'll ask how many people in this room have ever written a job listing? Anyone? How many have enjoyed it? <laughs> only, only me. Um, our first application in Texio focuses on talent content. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how it works. So imagine if when you set out to write your job listing, you have certain goals in mind. You want to attract qualified people, people that are good enough to interview. You increasingly, especially in technology and finance, want to attract a diverse mix of people. So at Textio, we began about 15 months ago collecting lots and lots of data. Data for us initially was a job listing and then information about how it actually performs in the real world. And then we look for patterns, like any machine intelligence company. So I'm going to show you how it works. Today, by the way, we work uh, not just on job listings. We've extended into uh, email as of a couple of weeks ago. But I'm going to show you the job listing application. So up here, you have uh, the Textio home screen. You'll see it looks just like a word processor. We like to say that if you can type and you can hover, you can use Textio. You don't need to be a machine learning, learning expert or a linguist to do so. And over here, I've picked uh, a job listing it's right now on the Amazon website. And I can pick on Amazon because it's the last place I worked before I start Textio. So let's go ahead and take, sorry, I'm not used to Windows controls. Go ahead. So this job listing is for a front end engineer. Whoops. Uh, it is a job listing, not an email. Uh, we picked the type of job. It's an engineering job. And this job is in Seattle, which is where we are from. Whoops. Seattle. Let's move on. I'm specifying these things because, as you can imagine, the guidance you would give for a job listing to attract a great front end engineer in Seattle might be very different than the guidance you would give to attract a great barista in Toronto, right? So the so language is a very local and specific thing. We're going to go ahead and we're going to paste in the job listing. I'm going to make it uh, a little bit bigger so people can see it as well. And you see that it gets marked up. And uh, the very first thing you see is you get a score. Uh, this is a score out of 100. So this is not super strong. Um, we model three metrics with this score. This means that compared to all similar job listings that Textio has seen, and we've seen listings from over 10,000 organizations at this point, it's several million listings added to every week that get tagged with information. This is going to attract fewer people. It's going to attract a lower proportion of people that you actually want to interview. So based on the resume submitted, you're not going to get people that you really like for this job. And the role is going to take longer to fill, so not super strong. You can see that we uh, have highlighted uh, some of the text with different colors. Uh, green language is language that statistically, when you see a lot of it, it drives up the score. Uh, it means this is a really effective listing. You can see this doesn't have too much. I could hover over, probably very hard to read in the back, but we give you some exposition uh, as to why this is strong. So, Kieran, um, you have about a minute. I just okay. want to yep. Uh, red phrases are phrases that statistically drive down positive engagement with the score. So if I hover over and I say, instead of saying successful candidate must have a strong drive for results, if I wanted to go ahead and edit this, I could take that out and just say 
you have a strong drive for results. Textio will detect that I've made a change, and you can see I've picked up a few more points for that change that I've made because <laughs> statistically, uh, formal language performs worse. Um, we look at uh, gender bias. We've been covered quite a bit in the press for gender bias. We look at the, the uh, patterns of language that correlate to attracting uh, proportions of men and women, respectively, to a role. I won't show you the edits there in the interest of time. Blue and purple represent masculine and feminine language. We look at structural characteristics, so we don't just look at the engrams and the words, but we look at things like how much of this content is bulleted. Turns out you want your job listings to be about a third bulleted. So we look at visual formatting characteristics. We look at uh, syntactic elements. Turns out things like the blend between active and passive language make a big difference. We look at semantic considerations. Uh, do you have an equal opportunity statement? Do you have a strong benefits statement? Um, any of you can go try this. One of our big, uh, really real principles is that the experience is friction free. So any of you could go if there were Wi-Fi in the room uh, to our site uh, right now, and you could be using it in 30 seconds. Um, so I encourage you to to try it out. Um, lots more I could show you, but this is the essence of it. Imagine job listings um, times every business document that you write, and that's what we're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Great. So, so some questions, I'm curious. So um, uh, right now, I, I guess you would sell this at the enterprise level to a company that is doing a lot of hiring. Um, yes. So do, are you making revenue right now? Is this? We are making revenue. We commercialized in July. Uh, we have a number of Canadian companies uh, who are subscribers, some of whom are in the room today. Uh, Royal Bank of Canada just subscribed. We're really excited about that. Uh, but we do. Most of our enterprise subscribers are uh, large tech and finance enterprises, uh, about two-thirds of our enterprise subscribers. We've had about 2,500 companies use Textio so far in our first. Uh, I'm happy the investor who invests in our company's eyes just got very big when I said that. Um, <laughs> but uh, about 2,500 companies since we launched our beta in March. And do you, have you ever done a calculation of sort of what the premium is for a smart Ad. In other words, like, yeah. so, so uh, was it a 10%, 20%? Yeah, so uh, ads, job ads that go through Textio fill an average of 20% more quickly than those that do not and attract between 12 and 15% more applicants from underrepresented groups. So the ROI is quite strong uh, on the use of the product. So we just launched in uh, Textio for candidate email. So it's sort of, hey, Siobhan, I saw you on LinkedIn. Please come work for my company. Um, and we're already seeing just in the first few weeks of usage their lift in candidate response rate. If you could have access to an AI that was 100 times smarter than the one that you're using, how, how would that, would, would that make your product 100 times more valuable? I'm wondering what the kind of gating factor is for um, your company in terms of AI. Um, so I don't think the gating factor in, for a company like Textio is in core AI technology, although certainly technology innovations only benefit us. Um, this is fundamentally like many machine intelligence companies. It's a data question. So how rich is your data set? How highly tagged with specific outcomes is that data set so that you can learn the patterns that actually make a difference for users? And what was the most surprisingly difficult thing that you've encountered uh, in the last year or so in, in trying to do this? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> not, they're not technology things. They're all, uh, the company is about 15 months old. Uh, so we're, we're young compared to the companies here. Uh, and I probably have a book of things that I wish I'd known when I started as a, an entrepreneur. And everyone up here will nod because they know them also. The technology is not the most challenging part of starting a company. I come from an enterprise background. I have a PhD in computational linguistics, so I knew the academic world. I worked at Microsoft and Amazon, distilling everything down to startup scale where you're doing everything yourself is for sure the most challenging part of, of getting the business off the ground. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.